everyone. This is Irene. Hello. Um, you were one of the people that I had classes with because we shared some of the grad level and mm -hmm. undergrad levels were shared. Um, and I TA'd one of your classes and you are one of the students that all the TAs would love to have. Right? Oh. <laughs> really. So wow. I knew from the time I met you, you were going places. So I'm excited to see uh, what we can learn from you today and hopefully we can absorb that. Thank you. So what I always ask people in the beginning is kind of um, where they grew up or mm -hmm. what influenced them to come to Rice. Yeah, so I was actually born in South Korea and I grew up there until I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So I moved to the States when I was in the fourth grade. Wow. Yeah, and so I started elementary school and went to middle school and high school in Virginia, Northern Virginia area close to DC. Um, and for high school, I went to a science and technology high school. Um, it was like a magnet school that specialized in those kind of things and had a lot of resources and research opportunities <laughs> even for high school students. I had always liked math a lot and when I took certain math and science courses in high school, I really um, enjoyed my experience and wanted to keep learning in that area. So that's mm -hmm. what um, kind of funneled my interest to engineering. Um, and I knew I was interested in some kind of chemistry, oh, and that was one of my decisions affecting um, college decisions. I was choosing between an in-state school that was also a very good school, um, but then when I went to Rice, I knew that the engineering program was better here, and also I wanted to kind of get away from where I grew up or what I was used to, so I made the decision to come to Texas, um, and it's been, it's been really great yeah, since it's then. for a journey from home. Yeah, yeah, but it's been awesome. Um, I really enjoy getting to experience like, a new place and meet new people. Was there a role model in your life that kind of helped you along the way? Hmm, I think, yeah, I think, um, <laughs> you know, up until high school, most of my role models were teachers, I guess, and um, I knew that the teachers who really inspired me, I like specifically a math teacher and a chemistry teacher in high school, mm -hmm. that I was very, very um, fortunate to have. They were amazing teachers, and they were both, happened to be with both PhDs. Um, and so I guess I was very inspired by their passionate teaching and also their depth of knowledge and how they taught with um, such charisma and just expertise. Um, but also uh, a big role model in my life was um, actually a missionary in Mexico. And so hey, he's Korean American, or he was, but now he has been in Mexico for, in the Yucatan area for eight years. And he works with an education center, center there to um, kind of uplift the poverty and um, sort of encourage the youth through education and mentorship. So it was linked to my home church, uh, my mm -hmm. church back in Virginia. So I spent a, my summer after junior year of high school there for six weeks and it was very impactful. And the summer after my senior year, I decided to go back for another five weeks. And I knew at that point that this was something that I would want to keep um, being involved in. Oh, after my freshman year, um, I went back for eight weeks. And then during my time in college, I've and then I had to do other things during the summer since that time. Um, but I visited every winter break for a week or two at a time. And so uh, my relationship with the missionary there has been hugely influential in kind of how I see my place in society and how I see what I want to do with my life. Um, and, and he also was an engineering background, actually. No yeah, he was a very, very accomplished engineering student. And he almost was going to start this PhD program. And then he ended up taking a different route. But um, so his sort of experience with life and the world like really helped me um, think of different sort of um, avenues that I could channel into. Awesome. Yeah. We'll get back to that. We'll yeah. get back to that. Yeah. So what is it that you studied exactly at Rice? So I studied material science and nanoengineering. I know I tend to target the students in this okay. department. I need to branch out a little bit, but yes. <laughs> yes. So I am also a material science and nanoengineering major. Um, should I talk about how I chose that or sure. my experience? Okay, so I came into Rice, I mentioned um, knowing that I liked chemistry and math. So I was like, oh, I'll do chemical engineering. Um, but I remember actually uh, during, maybe towards the end of my first semester here, um, I sat down with a friend who's also a material science major and he was basically telling me about this major because I hadn't heard about it before I came to Rice. Um, and so we were talking about sort of like our interests academically and intellectually. And so as I was explaining my interest in chemistry, um, he told me, hey, that sounds like something that, you know, material scientists do and material science try to understand. And so I was like, oh, okay. And he was kind of telling me how chemical engineering is a little bit different from that. 
I had it in mind to kind of try this out, and so I worked as a research assistant my second semester in a material science lab, and I really liked my research, and so that kind of solidified my decision to go into this major. I mean, I think a lot of us were in the same boat. I didn't know what it was either. I was starting off as um, when I was an undergrad as environmental, mm -hmm. and I switched out um, basically after my first year. Yeah, I, it's not it's as weird because yeah. it's like um, it's almost a part of every. Uh, different engineering department in some way, but it, you're right, it just, ha I guess it just has emerged as um, its own branch yeah. in, in the sense that it's much more micro nano scale, mm -hmm. I think is the difference from what a lot of the other engineers right. does. Mm -hmm. okay. So what has been sort of the worst and the best things that have happened to you while you were at Rice? Ooh. I know, this, one, this one's a big one. This is heavy. It's a heavy question. I guess I, I'll talk about the hardest thing that's happened to me at Rice. And I think that was the spring of my sophomore year. Um, I was going through a lot of things, like personally. Um, I was having a lot of questions, and um, it, I, it was related to kind of like my worldview slash my faith life, um, which was very important to me. So when I was going through a lot of things in that arena, it, it started to affect like a lot of the er other parts of my life. and. Um, my academics that semester were very challenging as well and so I think the hardest thing about that semester um, was really questioning for the first time whether I was going to make it. Uh, not, I, I think not in the technical sense of oh I'm not going to graduate and get out of here but I just really um, recognized that I didn't have the sort of psychological slash um, technical like toolkits to build up my self-confidence and kind of like set a vision for myself and really know where I belonged and what I was doing and so I think that was very hard for me. Um, it was triggered by like the hardships that I mentioned but I think the harder part was I just didn't have a confident direction on my life and at the same time to be going through sort of like an academic challenge and experiencing um, that kind of insecurity um, and so that was really I had to take time to reflect on you know, um, what do I need to improve on, or how should I situate myself more so I can get a better grip on where Almost I'm Almost like going. an early life crisis. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. How did you overcome that? How did you sort of learn about yourself during that time? Yeah, um, honestly, there were residue sort of questions that remained after that time, I think up through my junior year. Um, and junior year was better in the sense that it was more stable. Um, and so I guess the time that it really got resolved would be like my senior year, okay. um, coming back to school and just really being surrounded by it was like the people that I was with. There were a lot of different things that these kind of people showed me. Um, first, just friends who really valued me and just kind of let me know that I was okay and that um, I would be okay. And also people who showed me, I think, incredible work ethic and incredible drive. And um, that really inspired me. I think that was something that I really um, was needing to see because I think part of my crisis was that as much as I had done very well in high school and my freshman and sophomore years I think I hit the wall because there was like a certain element of discipline or grit that I hadn't had to display before. Senior year um, I encountered people who really showed that to me um, and they were very close to me so I knew that this was something that was humanly achievable and so I think that gave me a lot of um, empowerment and so that really ch transformed my mindset about what I thought I was capable of doing. Yeah, and so I'm glad you figured it out mm -hmm. because now you know the next steps for you I would say are probably quite um, unconventional mm -hmm. than what a lot of your classmates did. They're all brilliant of course I've seen all of you guys from you know your little homeworks that you turn in right yeah. but um, you're all going places but you you decided sort of on a different journey mm -hmm. to Harvard law school yes so what kind of made you transition from all these things that you've learned and during those reflections to deciding that this is where I want to be yeah so that's been quite the journey um, it's it's taken a while, but at the same time, it's been very quick. My reflection sort of on my life started around the fall semester of my junior year, when this is typically the time that our major people are trying to plan their summers, right? Internships and, yes. and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking about those things, and um, I thought, okay, well, whatever I'm doing this summer, I want it to be 
um, actually tangibly helpful to my life and where I want to go. And so I don't want to just do something because it's what people do. I actually want to invest this time well. And so along those lines, um, when I thought about doing an industry internship, I just knew, I just knew that um, I wasn't going to end up in this area uh, for my career. As much as I also enjoyed the, my whole research career during my time at Rice and at Material Science, well, I guess through my experience, I kind of, upon reflecting, also realized that this was probably not where I wanted to go long, long term. I didn't see myself uh, being completely satisfied given my sort of interests. I was like, okay, so what do I do with my major if I don't want to go into research and I don't want to go into industry? Well, I started juggling a, little, a lot of options mentally. I looked into teaching, I looked into different kinds of um, community work or um, translating because I really like language too. Um, and along that time frame, I encountered patent law. And I had heard about patents law before, but I kind of dismissed it in my head. I was like, oh, it sounds very bureaucratic, administrative, doesn't really seem to interest me. But at this point, um, it was sounding more and more promising to me because it, I would be in contact with new technologies, with new science, but I would be on the more administrative, the more um, kind of, I guess, client-based, like helping situation, which I knew that I would enjoy more. I, I do enjoy um, working with people and interacting in that sense. My initial plan was to work in as a paralegal after college so I could see if this was the field that I wanted to go into and then go to law school if I wanted to. But my spring semester, um, I was talking to a patent lawyer and on the phone, and she said, if you want to go into patent law, you should just go into law school straight because um, just the work you're going to be doing is different and you just don't get as much respect in the company. And that was, those were things that were intuitive and like I had known before, but somehow the way she said it made me really feel like I should just go to law school straight. So it was March or so, my junior year, oh, just over a year ago. And I sat down and I researched like the law school application process, the timeline, the LSAT. And I think around the same time I got an internship um, near my home, um, near in DC at a patent law office. And so that summer I spent doing patent law internship and um, studying for the LSAT. So the internship was nice and I think I realized that this was something that I could do, um, but I also found myself really struggling because I also paid a visit to Mexico this summer. And that really stirred up a lot of, I think, other interests in me too. And I for just- a nonprofit. Yeah, so. yeah. And so the extent to which I enjoyed that kind of direct social community work um, was really uh, impactful in the way that I didn't I couldn't justify not looking into those kind that kind of work either and so I was very torn between these very seemingly different paths um, but I as I was talking to people and, and talking to that mentor of mine that's near Mexico he actually encouraged me to go ahead with this law school process full force um, because he told me that, you know, um, as young people, it's kind of hard to see where your interests or where your path will sort of line up in the future, but we don't want to make sort of emotional decisions right now, and for some reason, this law school path has been open to you. I think right now, what's responsible for you to do is go ahead with this and see where it takes you. And Even though in my head, it still wasn't resolved how these things would come together, um, I. I guess the best way to put it is I felt wrong letting go of either of these things. Sure. So I decided to kind of have no answers but just do both or have both in, in my heart and my mind. So I took the LSAT, I applied to law school, I wrote my personal statement about my interest in patent law um, and then I was waiting. And then the spring semester I started hearing back from law schools and I was very fortunate to have um, very good results and so I started visiting these um, law schools right and so as someone who has no exposure to the legal field or law school like nobody in my family has been a lawyer um, I'm a first generation professional and so it's it was kind of very all new to me and so those admitted student events were actually very very um, important for me to learn about what kind of people and what kind of work um, kind of law school produces at one of my at my first law school visit this school is particularly known for its emphasis on public interest law and like social justice. Oh, and so, yeah, admitted students, the current students and the professors I met, um, just were all talking about public interest and, or in some form or another. And I got so inspired because, um, especially at that school, their immigrant rights 
program is very strong and I'm also very interested in immigrant immigration and I've done an internship with the legal aid organization before that works with asylum clients okay. um, and given my interest in Latin American culture and that population yeah you um, might even be able to tie into that center yeah too. yeah so um, I was feeling really uh, excited about this po possibility as my career I started kind of letting go of patent law a little bit mm -hmm. and maybe coming to an understanding that this was what I was supposed to do, um, yeah. being a social justice and activist lawyer. And Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think that's been a crazy journey because I remember when I was a child, I wanted to be a lawyer. Like Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so this was, so <laughs> yeah, so I, full I, circle. I know. So, I mean, as a kid, it was kind of like, sort of like fluffy, like, right. oh, oh be this is so artist, cool, yeah. yeah. But in 10th grade um, was when I first learned about the issue of human trafficking. And it really kind of broke my heart. And so I was reading this book put out by this nonprofit. Um, and in the book about human trafficking, there was a story in there about a social justice lawyer uh, who went to India and like grabbed these papers from this factory who was enslaving people, uh, basically indentured servitude. Okay. And he took them to court and won the case and freed the people. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. I want to be a social justice lawyer, right? But I, me being at a science and tech high school, I think, and just the current sort of, or just the environment where I was at, I was never exposed to, um, I think, the real potential of me going into those kind of professions. And so it was just very, um, kind of more natural for me to fall into the engineering and science track, which I also really enjoyed. So I do not regret that at all. And I think that's like a natural question that people have of me and I have also asked myself um, <laughs> and I've struggled with it for sure I've definitely uh, wished certain things at some point um, but I've come to a very good place about the path that I've taken but it's really cool that I think um, those kind of like inklings that I had before are coming back to me I think in a very concrete manner yeah and it's yeah. kind of working itself out mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was, thank you. It's a story. Congrats on Harvard, by the way. Thank you, yes. How did you choose it? So this is a question, too, that I had when I was an undergrad mm -hmm. choosing, right? What do, you, what do you think really made you, in the end, choose Harvard? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, so that was a journey, too, I think. So to be more specific, um, I didn't. I applied to six law schools, mm -hmm. um, and I knew I wanted to not go too far, because okay. I've already moved from my home in Virginia to here, and I have a very close tie to Mexico in Yucatan. I was really into this California school at the beginning of my application process. So your top two were Harvard and probably this California school? Yeah, so I was really to Stanford. Okay. Like I was holding out, and then I eventually decided to um, kind of narrow down my options because I didn't want to um, split myself. So I applied to mainly East Coast schools, and um, I guess the main schools I was choosing from were NYU, Columbia, and Harvard. I heard back from Harvard the latest. Mm -hmm. And so it initially it was between NYU and Columbia. And NYU was the first school that I visited that I got all these sort of inspirations from. And so I had a very- It's also hard yeah. to let go of your first, yeah. the first school you visit. Yes. I that. Yeah, it's, I had a very positive experience there. And um, I experienced a lot of like emotional attachment to the culture and the people there. And I think, I still um, have a really special place in my heart for NYU just because of, I think, the very um, caring and strong culture um, and sort of service-mindedness that I really value as well. And so actually when I got into Harvard, I was like kind of torn, uh, but already at that point external factors were pointing me to Harvard. Um, one, financial aid was going to be better for me at Harvard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then two... That is I, important. That yeah. is important. And two, I was very strongly considered to be a gap year okay. at that point. And I knew that Harvard um, was a lot more lenient or even encouraging with gap years or deferring enrollment. And the financial situation uh, is more stable at Harvard if you do a gap year because theirs is only based on your income level. Okay. So you're, you wouldn't be kind of putting your merit-based aid um, on Jeopardy. Okay. And so given those factors, I already knew that if I got into Harvard, I would probably be leaning towards there. Mm -hmm. But the more social aspect or the more soft um, I guess elements, um, I was still very emotionally um, inclined to NYU, but I also talked to my mentor person again. So my two big questions um, but when choosing between NYU and Harvard were, well, 
in NYU, I feel like I would just thrive there. The community is so um, close-knit in a way and very supportive and also very uh, conducive to someone, you know, being trained in, in, in the public interest mindset. And then two, the immigrant rights program, I was just like so very excited and there were just amazing faculty in that program that I would be able to work closely with and so I couldn't, I felt like that would be something that I would be missing out on if I didn't go to that school. And so how he addressed or we discussed these questions was that he said, well, um, you know, actually, yeah, I think that if you go to Harvard, you might like the culture a little bit less than at NYU, but that's also not why we go to a school, right? And um, as much as um, it would have been great for you to be in a place where everybody is like, so, I don't know, um, supportive or similar, um, I think maybe that difficulty or that difference at Harvard will make you grow in amazing ways that you need to. And, and then the other question about the immigrant rights program was that um, this was actually very interesting and he said, you know, we get very excited about specific programs that, you know, these named programs and they're great, um, they train people very well and give you a lot of support, but at the same time there's a very specific mold um, that these programs are designed to fill and um, there's, a, a, there's already a set culture and a direction that these are going to funnel you in, but I, I believe that, um, and he's religious, I'm religious, so he, he, the way he articulated was that, you know, I believe that God is shaping people in very individual ways um, and sort of non-traditional ways um, in order to become um, very impactful leaders. And so that was really encouraging to me because I, at the moment he said it, I felt like it was true. I felt like even just given my path up till now, I've been a very, my interests like haven't been served too well by any one set um, sort of path or, um, I think program and so just the fact that I have these sort of different interests that I would want to be able to pull from um, I think also pointed me to more to the direction of Harvard where the culture is I think more intellectually diverse and gives you a little bit more space to exercise individuality in shaping your own career uh, and your education. So once that conversation was had um, I felt very comfortable with Basically, um, all these factors going into Harvard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, I'm so excited yeah. for you. I can't wait. But you said you, you were going to take a gap year. Yeah, so that was a heavy sort of consideration. When I went to go visit Harvard, I um, was talking to a career advisor there um, during one of the sessions. I, I brought up this concern. I said, I have this dilemma. I really feel like this gap year would have been very helpful for me, and I wanted to do it. And I feel like I'm conflicted because I feel like that's something I can't do once I start law school. But she was talking to me about students who have taken gap years during law school or use the Harvard Fellowship and, and funding to do international like um, public interest or serving sort of nonprofits, those sort of opportunities. And so I realized that um, your possibilities um, with your legal education is a lot more flexible than I thought. And so uh, I actually uh, became very excited that this is something that I could definitely incorporate and even expand upon um, with the legal education after after I start or after even I graduate so okay so you're getting started then in the fall yes I'm going okay. straight okay yeah. but now you know you do have a chance to mm -hmm. while in gra uh, not grad school law school yeah so used to saying that now yeah while in law school you right. potentially could again incorporate some of all of these right. different factors that you've been talking about yeah yeah that's really encouraging too that mm -hmm. um, all these schools are thinking also about the, not just you guys as um, graduates, but you guys as people. Yeah, and I think that's also school specific. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that law schools at all have that kind of flexibility, mm -hmm. and I think not a lot of them do. And yeah. I'm very um, happy that Harvard um, is very flexible about these things because I don't think, I think it would not be as easy to get those same kind of opportunities at, let's say, like the other schools that I got sure. into and was considering. Some, any kind of, graduate education in the United States is very exportable so and transferable um, even if it's not technically you know th that certification as a lawyer is not going to transfer over across borders but your skills that you've developed and the kind of um, thinking and the training that you've gained is going to serve you um, well to have um, impact any kind of situation so that's what I'm hoping for yay yeah. <laughs> so wait how long law school's two years three years, three years. okay mm -hmm. So you have the next three years booked. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe four. Maybe you, four. Um, mm -hmm. Do something else in the meantime. Yeah. Well, that's super, super exciting. Thank you. Yeah, it's been very exciting. 
But you're starting in the fall though. So yes. what's the summer looking like for you? Are you taking a break? Actually, an actual break, I read. <laughs> so for me, an actual break is going back to Mexico because whenever I'm not there, I am slightly sad. <laughs> but no, so I am going there for six weeks this summer. Oh good, and so, so you're not completely of, letting go yet. So that's mm -hmm. good. No, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's already been established. This is a very long term and um, kind of solid commitment for me. And not even just a commitment, but something that's somewhere I just love to be. And so I definitely want to keep investing in my relationships there and the work there. And then coming back for the last part of the summer to sort of mentally prepare, move in and all that. Oh, how exciting. Boston, yeah. But what I really love is also the fact that you were pretty consistent about I, I, I'm saying like a lot of times you see people that do missions, they'll do it here and there, but it seems like you developed a really deep connection with the Yucatan mm -hmm. in Mexico and with your mentor. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems to have served you well. Yeah. So seems your vision now is clearer than it was before, for sure clearer than, you know, sophomore you. Or even like three months ago <laughs> or six months ago, yeah. So that's so incredible. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can really um, relate to your story with all these different conflicting interests and stuff. Yeah, I think if there's like one thing that I got out of this is that it's the cheesy saying like trust the process but for me it's been really hard for me to see you know like two three steps ahead of me at any point but just following that one step ahead of me um, in front of me has led me to things that I would have never expected could come together. And I know that I'm, I'm only just beginning to, like all these different changes, like I think it's like so big or whatever, but I probably, like there's more <laughs> coming as well, so. I don't know if I have anything else. I usually, my, I end with maybe a silly question. Okay. Who is your favorite superhero and why? Mm -hmm. It's hard for a millennial like me to think of any other superheroes in the Avengers at this point. <laughs> yeah. I'll say. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I would say my favorite Avenger is probably Iron Man because because he's in in name nominally a superhero, but I feel like the way that he exercises heroism or you know his desire to save the world is very sort of layman like everyday guy who just has a heart, heart. and he struggles with um, character issues and. Um, really difficult questions of morality um, and friendship and loyalty that I think brings the story of heroism down to a level where I can relate. And I think I kind of sort of resonate with his sort of disregard for certain things and kind of carelessness that offends people and is not the best sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a hero, but he's also kind of a jerk. And so um, I think I really like that yeah, because it, it lets you take the concept of goodness or heroism like not so seriously. Um, I think I just really like tales and stories of humans who are real and who are flawed but have a big heart. Yeah. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Well, okay. That's all I had for you. Thank you so much. This is very Best of luck, Irene. But I know I'm just excited to see where you go. And I'll keep up with your journey even beyond you know, just here. Yeah, so. for sure. You too, I'll keep in touch. Yeah. Yay!